Hi, everyone. This is Justin Olbrantz. And this is Don Schaefer. And you are listening to the Wise and the Wandering Podcast. For those who know the way and for those who are led astray. And if you feel like you fall into either of those categories, then you're in the right place. So let's dive in. Well, Don, what are we going to talk about today? Well, I think the topic uh, we're planning on talking about here is called Finding Your Confidence. Oh, which, that's a good one. Yeah, this should be a good one because I think this is an area that everybody has to find in their life, and a lot of people struggle with it. And a lot yeah. of people are born into this world with no confidence at all, and we have to find this as we get grow in life. And a lot of times we do not. We struggle with that, and we have a lack of confidence in all the things we do. And that's where I'm hoping today we'll have an opportunity to talk a little bit about confidence, uh, where it comes from, how to develop it, and help everybody be much more profitable in life because we all need confidence in some way. Yes, we do. And I think that's exactly what we're going to do today. And I think that confidence is something that, you know, we talk about the wandering, right? We talk Mm. about the lost, something you have to find. If you don't have it already, you're kind of lost without it. And it's it's something that you do have to acquire, something that you do have to find. I don't think it's just completely natural. And I think in some cases it might be natural, but you still have to find it. You still have to look within yourself. You still have to look deeper. You still have to maybe have different perspectives on things to be able to find it. Um, I guess I just want to start here. And I pulled up the definition in the Merriam-Webster dictionary, right? The most modern definition for confidence. And it says the definition is the feeling or belief that one can rely on someone or something. Also firm trust. Hmm. Right. So it's a feeling, but it's also a belief. Yeah. So when finding confidence, you have to find something to believe in. You have to find something to trust in. You know, you really have to have something there that is, I would say, grounded and rooted in good principle. Otherwise, it has to be rooted, you know, in good principle, because if it's not, it's going to lose your trust. Yeah. Right. You know, how many times have you said in your life that I'm confident that this is going to happen. I'm confident like that tomorrow this is going to happen or I'm going to get this or this outcome is going to happen for me and it, or it's going to go this way. And then it didn't go that way. Yes. Right. And yes. when it, and when it didn't, you lose trust, you start to lose trust. And I think over time, once that trust erodes, you start to lose confidence. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, and that's where I know like confidence is an element of a person's life. We have so many parts going on. You know, we're born into this world. There's so many areas in our life that have to be complete in some way or some fashion, or we're not successful in life. Yeah. And sometimes people get caught in a trap of lack of self-confidence. They don't have confidence in themselves because like you're saying, Justin, they a lot of times don't have something to believe in. The only thing they have to believe in is themselves. And if they fail at anything, all of a sudden it falls apart for them. Right. You know, and that's where it is a belief system of believing in yourself, but believing that there is an outer source that will work with you, that will help you develop this confidence. And I know for myself, you know, I look at life this way a little bit. I look at, you know, a child being born in this world and the child has to develop confidence in a lot of areas, has has to learn how to stand. It falls a lot of times, but he learns how to stand. But he mm-hmm. continues developing confidence. Pretty soon he's walking. Pretty soon he's running. Right. You know, and if the parents are doing a proper job, they're helping him develop a confidence in himself. And what happens a lot of times in life is as a, a person gets older, they don't have the encouragement. They don't have the sources to help them develop a good, solid confidence. Yeah. So the self-doubt, there's doubt all their life. And all the possibilities of life that has to happen, a lot of it and most of it takes some sort of confidence in some way or fashion. You know, every big move people take, you know, there's always doubt. I remember one time I purchased a property because we fixed up properties. I purchased a property and I'm sitting there that night after I signed the paperwork, after it was an accepted offer saying, man, what did I just do? You know, and but, you know, I went through and because I 
basically threw my hat over the wall and I signed that paper, it was mine. Yeah. So I had to build a confidence. But once I got done with that property, I had lots of confidence, you know, because I stepped it through and I stepped out. And that's where I think a lot of people in life, the areas that they they find themselves trapped in because they don't, just don't have the confidence. You have to step it out and, and work it out to develop that confidence or you'll never gain that. And the beauty of confidence Confidence is once you develop it in one area, you can apply it in all areas of your life. Wherever there's a fear, wherever there's a doubt, all this sort of thing. You know, you go back to the formula that you've worked with. You know, just as a child, you always got up until you learned how to walk. You didn't sit there on the floor for the rest of your life. Yeah. You, you develop the confidence in your walking ability. And I think we as adults need to go through some of those same principles to be able to learn how to walk the way we should and have the confidence in life because there is a whole world in front of us. We were created for greatness and a lot of times because of lack of confidence, we don't walk in it. Yeah. And I think you mentioned something there. Let's just go back to what you said about the source, right? We have to go back to the source. And it's been a common theme in this podcast is going to the source, yeah. this, going to the source. And it's so important because you got to, everything has to start with God. Yes, it does. Because we have God given natural confidence. And the world wants to replace that with man given doubt yeah. and control systems, right? You talk about that doubt that creeps in, that doubt that's, that, that sets in. Yeah. And then it, it really stops you. It keeps pulling you back. And we go back to the definition. I was, I was talking about it. Something that you have to place your trust in. Well, if you keep placing your trust in the wrong things, your confidence is going to diminish over time right. because you kept placing your trust in places where it wasn't producing anything back. You weren't getting a return back from, you weren't seeing a result. Yeah. Um, or it wasn't, you know, it wasn't helping you and it, it was maybe it was sabotaging you, whatever the case was. Mm -hmm. That trust, once you lose that trust, it makes it harder. Like you're saying, the fear sets in, not, not only just the doubt, the fear sets in, but then there's certain things that stop you from being able to get that confidence. Yeah. It's hard to even have faith yeah. when you start losing trust in, in life in general. That's because true. Then the insecurities start coming up. Then that inner voice in your head starts telling you, and we could even call this the enemy, starts telling you you're rejected and stuff like oh, yeah. that. And yeah. nobody wants to be around you. <laughs> but it's all about the source, right? Yeah. And if you are right with God, you will be confident. Yeah. I think so. And you will be confident because of that. You'll be confident in who he has called you to be. Yeah. Because... If you're confident about who, who he has called you to be, then you can love yourself. Right. A lot of the times I think it starts with love. We talk about this, but even getting to that confidence level, you have to love yourself. Yeah. And we talked in previous episodes about, oh, you have to learn to love yourself before you can love people. And that's true. But confidence is kind of like the tip of the spear. And you really, in order to get there, there's going to be a certain level of love. But once you can love yourself... You're then confident in your purpose. Mm -hmm. And when you're confident in your purpose, you can become unstoppable. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's so true. So true there, Justin, because I know once you connect into a purpose, connect to the source and know exactly what your purpose is in life, then you can place all your confidence because, the, you know, the Bible says that he is the source. He's the helper. He's our helpmate, takes care of and directing us all that. But I know a lot of times what I see in lack of self confidence you can it's it shows itself you know there's signs in that one thing is you know you want to do something but you just can't get yourself to do it yeah um some people what they do is they medicate themselves because oh. of lack of confidence yeah, they do. you know a lot of people that a lot of addictions a lot of this sort you know it's people with a lack of confidence in their life to mm -hmm. be able to really do and establish themselves so they fall into a lot of different traps ways of just appeasing time you know i know people sometimes they get into uh, i'll just throw this out there but you know they get into novels there's nothing wrong with novels or nothing but a lot of times what happens in life you find you say novels novels yes okay you know 
Well, they get into that sort of thing. A lot of times what happens in life, people are looking for a place to escape because they haven't got the confidence to step out and become the person they really were meant to be. So they find themselves plugging themselves into various sorts of stuff, you know, so that their mind can get off of the fact that they are lacking confidence. And, uh, And if we can... Grab that one element, because I know myself, I look for people. It seems like the whole world is looking for people with confidence. Mm-hmm. You know, you look in leadership and all this, you're looking for someone who is confident about who they are and what they are and what they were meant to be doing. And myself, when I talk to people, I can sense in their voice sometimes confidence in yeah. themselves. And I love that. You know, I love being able to do that because I know they're confident in what they're doing. It mm-hmm. isn't something that um, they're walking around doubting themselves and they don't know if there's, this is right or that's right. They know. They know. And as you were saying, uh, Justin, I think God is meant to be a part of that in our life. He's given a, us this element that we need, but the source of getting that need is in Him. Mm-hmm. You know, He wants to be the source. He wants to fill us with an understanding. And I know the Bible talks a little bit about the fact about not worrying about tomorrow. So many people are so worried. You know, the fact is I just seen a little thing on the news where people are making all these these safe places and yeah. little uh, huts and whatever. So if the world crashes, and, and they were saying inside of them they got plenty of movies and plenty of books, plenty of entertainment so they can get their mind off of things. But they can get themselves in a place where the whole world can fall apart, but they got their place to go. You know, the Bible tells us that we don't worry about tomorrow. So don't be anxious. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Worry about about itself, yeah. you know, and, but we get ourselves all twisted up and we lack confidence in the fact that he is the one that's going to, he's the one that created us. He's the one that's going to take care of every element in our life. Yes. And I would even say the, the in the Bible, it says that he, um, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Yes. And because he's inside of you, the spirit that came here, that lived in Jesus, right? Yeah, the Spirit, yeah. the Holy Spirit could be inside of you, is inside of you. If you yeah. believe, if you're willing to believe, and that confidence is a supernatural confidence then, right? Because you talk about addictions and stuff like that, and that's so true. Those things, these like artificial barriers that get in the way from people even having their confidence, it really stops them. And I can even speak on this myself. It it's it's really hard to get away from those crutches and those addictions and even the, the trauma and stuff like that because your past experiences alone can have an impact and a large influence on your ability to face new experiences with confidence. And, and that's what, you know, we were talking about before with the trust that erodes and stuff like that. People just go through different relationships over and over and over again yeah. and keep getting keep getting played or cheated on or whatever the case, or it just keeps ending in heartbreak. They will slowly lose confidence over time. Right. They lose confidence in themselves. And I think what happens is then they start falling into worse relationships yeah. because when they don't have confidence in themselves, they think the behavior that they're getting from somebody mm-hmm. is justified. Yeah. That maybe they're not worthy anymore. Maybe they don't deserve the best anymore. Like they did nine relationships ago or two <laughs> relationships ago. Yeah. But really their confidence level is low and they start to see, they, they start to settle, but it starts to kind of go backwards. It's, mm-hmm. Maybe it falls, maybe, you know, people fall into a depression, but I'm just saying in, in terms of what they accept, the behavior they accept from other people and the way they allow other people to treat them, they feel justified because their confidence level is low. Yeah. They don't they don't know what they deserve. Right. Because when you're when you're confident in your abilities, when you're confident in your skill, when you're confident in what you have to offer, you're not going to settle. Mm-hmm. You're, you're going to go out there and you're going to strive for the best because right. you're going to be the best. And yeah. you only want to be around. You only want to be associated with people who are also confident themselves. That's right. That's and I right. think a lot of the times it's, it's really hard to do that by yourself. You, mm-hmm. you need to have you need to have God in your life. Yeah. You need to have God as the center driving force for your confidence. That's right. Because I, th- I truly believe this. You know, a lot of the times your confidence is what's going to get you over that addiction. Mm-hmm. Your confidence 
and just and finding a reason to do something and knowing you have it in you mm-hmm. and he that's in you that's greater than the world, yeah. that's what's going to get you past that trauma. Oh, yeah. And, and even just like creating things, that's what's going to get you to write that book, that confidence. That's, that's right. what's going to get you to to write that that song, right? Mm-hmm. That's what's just, that's what's going to get you to create that project and start it. Yeah. Is that confidence? Yeah. And like we're saying, you find it when when you go to the source. Mm-hmm. That's right. And a lot of times, what you're saying too is you know the nine relationships and all that that have fallen apart. You know, sometimes what happens to a person is they develop a loser's attitude or yes. they become victims, yeah, you know, or, 100%. and so many times in those situations, they're constantly blaming their environment and everything around them for their issues and stuff they're dealing with without realizing it could be just all a lack of confidence in themselves. And it's, it's true, you know, being around people with that lack of confidence in themselves, it's sometimes hard. You it know, rubs it, off on you, too. Oh, yeah. And that's right. You know, so you have to be co- uh, careful with who you associate or what you associate with because there are confidence builders. And then you look at teams. You look at sports teams. You know, you can take a team that's way ahead by halftime, but if they lose their confidence in the second half, they could easily. We've seen Super Bowls where there's been a 20-point swing in a game yeah. just because of confidence, just yeah. one element. Yeah. You know, and a lot of times uh, teams will get people that can just talk confidence, speak things into their players because it's all a mind game. You know, we get our mind thinking the way it needs to think. We can have confidence in who we are and what we are and uh, to realize that God has created all of us with great in mind, it's a matter of us finding the confidence to fulfill the dream that we might have. Like you're talking about writing a book, which I'm looking at myself in different areas. And yeah, that one's resonating. That yeah. is resonating. Yes, it is. But, um, you know, and it all takes confidence. And I know myself and the things that I do, the more I do it, the more confidence I gain in that. And I know there was a time, I can share this with you, Justin, there was a time that I struggled, you know, just talking in front of people. You know, I remember... I cannot imagine that. I I did, I did. Because I remember uh, in school, they'd have you give a little speech, you know, and I remember I had the same speech through grade school going into high school. It was was one topic and one speech. And I had a hard time talking with people. But when you get there talking with people after a period of time, and then there's an element, like you you had brought brought up earlier, Justin, about love. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the Bible says, uh, perfect love casts out all fear. All fear, yeah. You know, so all of a sudden, when you start to love the individuals, you step out. I know myself, to find confidence in different areas, I start to say to myself, who can I help by doing this? You know, how, what type of love do I have to have inside me, Lord, to help me want to do Because you see purpose in it. Yeah, and I step out in it, all of a sudden I develop the confidence. I start saying, this is working. It really yeah. is. You know, because I've developed a confidence, and then you feel so much better inside. Because I know, um, I, and if I can get back a little bit here, yeah. I know Jesus himself. You know, when he preached the message when he was on earth, he developed and instilled confidence in these people. He went to the poor and the downtrodden, and all of a sudden, they had confidence. You know, and and the elites at that time, the religious-type world at that time, they didn't like that. They were oh, losing they control of the people because these people were starting to realize that, hey, you know what? I can do this stuff. You know, yeah. I have abilities inside me. Right. You know, I just need to be confident enough to develop all this. And yeah. that's where Jesus was an excellent example. In simple ways, he, he expressed this message that everyone is valuable in some way or fashion. And a lot of times the thing that stops people is just a lack of confidence. And I I believe when Jesus talks about putting his grace upon us, it's a lot of confidence he's instilling inside of us and realizing, you know, what's important in life. I mean, life doesn't last forever. So what is it going to hurt if I step out and maybe fail at something? Is that going to destroy my confidence? No. I'm just going to try to, as you had mentioned earlier, find an excellence in what I do and try to perfect what I'm doing because I'm confident in who I am. And you can tell people who are confident in their own skin. 
you know, and I love people because I can, they come up and they talk and whatever. I say, you know, this person is really confident in their own skin. They and know. They, and they speak a message of they positivity. Really they don't, they yeah. don't speak like negativity no, to no. you. They're, you don't get that vibe from them, from confident people when you're around confident yeah. people. Oh, yeah. It's an easy listen. Yeah. You know, it's an easy listen yeah. to these types of people. Some people are hard listens <laughs> yeah. because they're always finding something to complain about. They're always t- uh, talking down about something. You know, everything is miserable. All this, you know, a lot of it is lack of confidence, lack of confidence, lack of confidence. But yeah. it disguises itself in different ways. Yeah, because not only is it the trust, but it's the belief itself. The belief itself, and you know, when you're talking down to yourself, when you're not saying good things to yourself, when you're not thinking good thoughts to yourself, and when you're talking down about yourself to people, I hear this all the time, when people just say, oh, I'm just an idiot, or yeah. I'm just angry, or yeah. I'm just I'm just this, or that's just the way I am, you know, <laughs> that's just the way I am. Yeah, and that's yeah. not something you want to say to yourself, because when you do that, you, in that moment, you come into agreement with it. Right. And it makes it harder to break out of that that negativity that you allow yourself to be around. Oh, yeah. Because it's all about the belief system. I really believe that. It's yeah. all about the belief. If you think, if you believe you're confident and you have a reason to stand behind it, you could be unstoppable. Right. If, if you find a reason, there's going to be nothing that stops you. Yeah. You'll be confident. Like you say, um, the experience and stuff like that, I think definitely helps mm-hmm. um, getting that experience you know, like talking to people and stuff like that. I think that one's a lot harder because you have to have the experience to start to develops, to develop that yeah, confidence. Because yeah. then you start realizing, I think, it's not as bad as no, you thought it was. You don't And die. then when you can start helping people, <laughs> it's no longer about just talking in front of people. It's helping people. You're going in with a mission. Yeah. You're going in with an objective. Like, I know oh, yeah. it's not about me anymore. Yeah. Yep. It's about helping people. That, it's about them. So it so doesn't true. really matter if I have confidence or not. I'm going to get my message across, and, and I'm going to get through to somebody, and I'm going to help them. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's kind of like a multifaceted word with confidence in God, right? We talk about confidence yep. in God. Yep. There has to be a sense of boldness there. There's a boldness in your belief that is dependent on the realization of your acceptance by God. Yeah. You know, that adoption process or whatever we call it. You know, when when you know you're accepted, when you know you're not rejected, and you, when you know that, when you have the conviction that your destiny mm-hmm. is secure in God, yeah. man, that's when you're, you're no longer lost. That's when, for me... <laughs> For example, that's when I knew I was no longer lost. I was found. That's right. When I had that conviction that I got the victory already, yeah. no matter what it is. You were talking yeah. about before in the Bible where it says, you know, tomorrow will worry about itself. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's true. But no matter just... what, if you if you keep your eyes on God and you fix that focus, mm-hmm. you know, fix that focus, you already have the victory. Yeah. You know, he'll go before you in all your problems. Yeah. You can leave it up to him. And that right there is confidence. Yeah. I mean, that everything is going to work itself out no matter what. Of course, I still got to put in the work and I still have to, you know, be a good person and Mm. I have to help people and want to do things that I think would would please God because it's having a relationship with God. But knowing that I have that strong relationship and that foundation is guaranteed to give you confidence. That's right. Yeah, it it will. And that's a good thing that we work that way, you know, developing our confidence. Because I know uh, for many people, it starts early on. It starts with their parents sometimes, you know, uh, saying, you know, be realistic, get your head out of the clouds, don't be just a dreamer. I mean, young children, they think about all this stuff, and a lot of times their parents are trying to keep them at a level where they don't develop a confidence rather than encourage them. But this isn't an excuse. This is, you know, just life itself, you know, because... If I was raised that way, I have a tendency to raise my kids that way. But I need to put an end to it and say, hey, you know what? I am going to encourage my children to expand themselves. I'm going to encourage myself. And that's where, like what you were saying a little bit here, Justin, our self-talk, what we say to ourselves, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's going to be a good day. You know, I'm going to succeed. It's going to be, I'm healthy. You know, I'm going to learn things today. I'm going to be positive today. I'm going to have a great attitude. I know I used to work 
at a plant, and the guy was the plant manager, and he'd always come in and say, you know, Mr. Schaefer, it's going to be a good day. And I, I'd say, yes, Devin, it's going to be a good day. You know, <laughs> But he'd do this every day. Yeah. You know, And I'm sitting there, this is powerful. It really is, because yeah. you set an attitude of confidence yeah. around you so, so you can blossom in these areas rather than letting yourself be beat down. And I remember one time... Uh, I got a few stories here, but I remember one time in Utah, I was in Utah, and I ran across a guy, Mr. Jones, Okay. and he asked me how I was doing, and I told him, I says, I think I'm doing pretty good, but it's my my opinion, and he says, <laughs> Mr. Schaefer, he says, you don't think anything, you know, he says, you don't think, oh, oh, wow. think it's got too much doubt in it, you know, so you yeah. don't think it, you know it, yeah. you, you are doing good, I said, whoa, because he was saying <laughs> that so many times we speak doubt in our conversation. Conversations, Mm -hmm. you know, and we speak lack of confidence Mm -hmm. in this stuff. I hope I can do this. Mm -hmm. You know, if this works, maybe it'll be for me. You know, but but we we speak is speaking doubt, saying, you know what. If I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit down and really think this through, and maybe I'll make it in small parts. But tomorrow, I am confident that I'm going to be doing this, and I'm going to do it, and just just do it. I'm confident in myself. And then what happens is you develop yourself step by step. Your level of confidence goes up and up, just like the child learning how to walk. Pretty soon you're running. Pretty soon you've got momentum in your life, and you have a whole vocabulary, whole way of looking at confidence and. As Justin, you were mentioned earlier, you become unstoppable. I mean, yeah. who's gonna... I mean, you trip, you fall, but you get back up. You, and you get keep back going. up. Yeah, you brush yourself off. Nothing's going to destroy you from what you're going after and the confidence you carry. And that's where it's a beautiful thing to see. Lack of confidence, you, it, you can have empathy with that. I, I feel sorry for people. You can see it in people sometimes. Because I, I myself, I like looking into faces and I like smiling, yeah. you know, and, and I like greeting people and stuff. But some people have a hard time even looking you in the face. Mm-hmm. You know, you walk by them, they're looking down, looking the other way, mm-hmm. or they pick their phone up. You know, <laughs> it always gets me right yeah. when the phone comes out and they yeah. start looking at their phone rather than have any eye contact. It tells me there's a lack of confidence there, yes. you know, and, and they're possibly trapped. They're trapped into something that maybe a word or two can help them realize right. what is happening here, right. you know, and not to let a life go by. How many people are laid to rest with lack of confidence, yeah, you know, that true. could have been, should have been, would have been if yeah. they could have only got some confidence in their life. And that's where myself, I'm always trying to be around people that are confident, trying to read things that help build my confidence, trying to listen to things that are from confident people, realizing yeah. getting into a I can type attitude rather than I can't type yeah. attitude, realizing the world is before me. If somebody yeah. did it, I can do it. If they, if people put shoes on the same way I, I put shoes on, well, then I should be able to do almost the same thing they can. Yeah. You know what I mean? They they put their britches up the same way That's I do. That's true. And you talk about vocabulary, and I think the word failure, that word really sets people back. And I think fail. It has to. You, you got to get to a point where you have to believe and you have to know. Yeah. Like you're saying, that guy was telling you, you don't just think, you know. I know. You have to believe. That's right. You have to know that you can't fail. Yeah, I was careful talking to him. You can't fail. That's you right. You can't fail. Every and, and if you're failing or whatever you're perceiving as failure is just a learning opportunity. Yep. It just means you haven't succeeded yet. Yep. That's right. And you have to go in with that mindset because that confidence right there, if you know and you believe that you can't fail, you won't fail. Yeah. Because you can't believe in it. Yeah. You know, you, it's not possible to you. So yeah. therefore there's always an opportunity. There's always going to be time for you to be able to succeed in whatever it is. Right. But but you have to start like you said there is there's a list of steps. I would say that kind of lay out a process in terms of getting people, getting associated with people who are in the right mindset, surrounding yourself, you know, maybe like the affirmations of the day or something. I'll tell you, before I started this podcast, I wrote a note down at my uh, home office desk. I wrote down a note and it said to help people find their gift and fulfill their purpose. Yeah. And that was my note. I, I mean, very broad. I was just like, that's what I want to do. And I feel like, I mean, with this podcast, 
that's essentially what we're doing. That's right. at least that's what I'm gonna. I, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, and yeah, I, same I can't. Here, same here. Yeah, and and I I can't fail at it. I can't fail. I'm gonna help you find your gift. I'm yeah. gonna help you fulfill your purpose. Yeah. And there's gonna be nothing that stops me or gets in the way. Right. There's things that have tried to stop me and have tried to get in my way, <laughs> but it's not going to. No, because I have confidence. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I want people that are listening to this to have that same kind of confidence because you can, you can, just like you believe in anything else in your life, you can believe in this and it'll manifest itself or it'll work its way. It'll happen yep. because you, you got to change your mindset. You got to change some other aspects of your life, but you got to really put your focus on the right things. Yeah. And I think you got to put your focus on Jesus. Yeah, I really do oh, because yeah. Jesus is going to get you through anything. Just like when Jesus was here, like you're saying, he was speaking confidence to people. He was giving them the ability to get through situations that they never thought they could do on their own. Yeah. He was taking people that had been, um, that, that, that were ill or people that had diseases for many, many years and were told they were never, ever going to be healed and mm-hmm. healing them on the spot yeah. instantly because yeah. they believed yeah. Because they, they came into agreement and probably because they had that confidence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He did have a message that developed a confidence and people who trust in him seeking that. Because, you know, there's an element, too, that comes with confidence. You start to achieve joy and peace with yourself. Yeah. You know, you're comfortable with yourself. I know the Bible talks about a peace that surpasses all understanding. And every one of us was created with a purpose in mind. And God is wanting more than we do to see us fulfill our purpose. And he's wanting yeah. more than we do. I would even say that that's true. And to add to that, God has more interest in you than you have in yourself. Oh, yeah, definitely so. And he's wanting to more out of us than we could ever want of ourselves. Because you look at... If you look at the whole picture, you look at the creator, he's the creator of each and every one of us. So, I mean, we are his design. That's why I tell people, it doesn't matter what size, shape, color, whatever a person is, you were designed on purpose for a purpose. And God is wanting you to achieve that. And that's where what we're speaking to today is an element that tries to stop this, which is a lack of confidence. You know, and if we can get ourselves to the place to realize how important we are, just where we're at, just with the circumstance around us, and develop an understanding that we need to trust in, as you're saying, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He says, I want to be your helpmate. I want to help you. Trust in all things. I will take care. Cast your cares upon me because I care about you. Mm -hmm. He is wanting you to fulfill his purpose. And this was the message he was talking about when he was on earth. But this is the message for today yet, too. You know, Mm -hmm. it's the same thing. You know, we might be in 2024, 20, whatever year we're talking here. But, I mean, you go to back 2,000 years ago, you go back 4,000 years ago, it was the same type of message. It was the same type of element they had to have. It talks about Abraham, walk by faith. His faith was considered as righteousness or the right thing to do. And that's where ourselves, we have to develop a faith, you know, in yeah. ourselves a faith in the resources that are out there, that we have a creator that is going to give us everything that we need, you know, and the beauty of it, he does it in a perfect way. It isn't like he forces us, he gives us a free will. But what we have to do is take this free will and basically put it into his hands, Mm -hmm. you know, not my will, but thine will be done, you know, and that's where, and develop the confidence that he's going to be there for us. And then we can have that peace. We can have that joy. We can, we can live a great life. You know, life can be good because we realize this is just a temporary process we're in, but this is our time. This is, as my dad used to say, it's time to make hay. He says, when it's hot, it's time to make hay. You know, so sometimes when I I come across a hot message, I say, it's time to make hay. You know, it's time to grab onto this stuff and say, you know what? I am going to take the elements I need and realize, because sometimes we live a life and we don't realize what we're lacking. I -hmm. tell people a lot of times they're one principle away from being successful. They've got everything lined up, finances, whatever it might be, but they're just not successful. And sometimes it's just one element that is needed. In today's topic, as far as confidence is concerned, for some people, for a lot of people, that is an element that is greatly needed, that's greatly lacking, because we will never fulfill ourselves and our happiness, our joy, or 
his plan unless we develop the confidence to be able to walk in all that. Yeah, that's so important because, I mean, you're talking about going back thousands of years and stuff like that, and the message hasn't changed, and, and it hasn't. And I think, you know, when I speak about focusing, keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus, right, that's a metaphorical concept as well. It's not just the person of Jesus, but it's it's the message that Jesus stood for. Mm-hmm. So when he said, I am the way the truth and the life, right? Yeah. Well, he's the life and yep. he's the way. That's Both of those are going to give you confidence, but also the truth. Yeah. And a hard thing to have in somebody's life is the truth. It's hard to find the truth. And I think that in order to be confident, you have to be truthful in your life. Mm-hmm. You have to be honest. Yeah. You can't be lying to people. And you also can't be lying to yourself because then what happens is you end up being hard on yourself because you're not being honest with yourself yeah. and you're, be- you're believing lies and you're telling yourself lies. Yeah. And that's why you're not getting that confidence right. because you're not focusing on the truth, the truth, the way in the life. The truth is just as important as the other two, but yeah. you really have to surround yourself with the truth in your life. You, do. you really have to be, you, you really have to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, you really have to, Get the deception out of your life. Yeah. Because deception, I mean, just lying to yourself and lying to people, that deception is is like a cancer. It'll mm. consume you. Yes, it really it can. And that'll that'll suck the confidence out of your life and, and keep you from ever even having confidence. Yeah. The yeah. the more that cancer develops in your life, the more that you allow that deception to carry on. Mm-hmm. So you gotta get all you gotta get all of that out of your life. It's completely toxic. Yeah. And and focus on what's important. Focus on that message that hasn't changed for thousands of years. No. That's a good thing about Jesus's teachings is I mean, you listen to these parables and stuff that he yeah. told to, yeah. to these people, and it's just amazing. I mean, the way right. he was able to break things like real world events or just just break down culture into stories that his audience would be able to understand mm-hmm. and in a way that no one's done before. Yes. And I think because of that, the teachings will be timeless. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that word will never go away. The word of God will never go away, but all those teachings, all those yes. things that Jesus did while he was here, oh, yeah. that's why it's important to focus on him. It's important to focus it on God. It is. And th- that'll help you. That'll help you. I would say beat your own problems mm-hmm. so then you can help other people to focus and beat their own problems as this well. Is true. This like is I true. said, my, my goal was to help people find their gift and fulfill their purpose. Well, guess what? I had to do that myself first. Yeah. I can't do that. If I don't have confidence, <laughs> I can't do that. If I don't help myself, if I don't know I have a gift, right. if I don't know I have a purpose, yeah. how am I going to help you find yours? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's so right. It, it all starts with yourself. It all starts with going to the source and then, yeah you know, taking it from there. Yeah, this is true. This is so true, Justin. If you don't mind, I'm going to share one of Jesus' story, and I know he tells stories better than I do. Oh, I definitely don't mind. <laughs> but I know Jesus had a story. He talked about the pearl of great price, yep. you know, and how uh, they found a pearl of great price, and the person that found it went back and sold everything he had so he could purchase this pearl. And he likened it unto the kingdom or the things of God or any part of a person's life. See, there's things in life that are very valuable, and what are you going to give up for them? Are you going to give up your doubt? Are you going to give up your lack of confidence? All these elements are keeping you from areas you need to go. And I know myself, you know, when it's all said and done, the pearl is what I want in life. You know, I want the great blessings of God. And so many times in life, we get ourselves in a place where we're trusting in other things. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we don't trust in God. We don't allow God to have a part in developing us and making us what we need to be. We just trust that everything is going to be good. And I know a lot of times people roll the dice. They just say, you know what? I just want to be comfortable for the rest of my life. Don't let anything bother me. I'm not going after anything. Just don't bother me. And I know sometimes I share messages about the fact that now is the time. Now, if we want to develop anything in our life, because I live, and I'm going to go a little bit beyond here, 
But I live in the belief that um, we're here for a period of time, and then we step over into what they call in the Bible eternity, mm-hmm. which is forever. And I believe that what we develop... Which is good, because we're going to be talking about that in our next episode. Yes, very soon. That's right. <laughs> That's why it's fresh in my mind. But you know, but what we do right now is we're developing ourselves for that spot in eternity. So there's going to be a time that we're going to either be patting ourselves on the back or kicking, trying to kick ourselves in the pants for the time we might have wasted while we're living life right now. And uh, the reason a lot of times we waste it is because we don't have the confidence to step out and say, hey, you know what? I am going to push myself a little bit. I'm not trying to find easy street because I know I've reached the age of uh, where some people retire and you know, and you reach an age where you could kick back and just do nothing. I, I know I've talked to some other guys are, that are at that age. I talked about getting a job and stuff like that and they said, you know, forget this. I've done my time, all this. But I say to myself, this is valuable time. This is time for achieving things. This is time for making hay, like my father always said. This is time to get it done. You know, and if there's an element that's keeping me from it, if I'm uh, lacking in the confidence to step out, if I don't have the trust, I know the Bible talks about all over the place, be strong and have good courage Mm -hmm. in what you're doing. They they would be sent out to battle. They'd be sent out for different things. You know, God would say, he'd tell them, you need to be strong. You need to develop a courage. You need to be confident in who you are and realizing the source is there. You know, if Mm -hmm. with God, all things, the Bible says, with God, all things are possible. God is wanting to do the impossible in your life, but you have to get to the place where you're doing the possible. You have to have the confidence to say, I'm I'm going to do all that is possible. I'm going to develop myself. My life, you know, when people say I am bored, that just gives me something up my backbone. I just can't stand that because it's telling me, what are you doing with your life? Yeah. You know, because you should be improving every day. Right, you know, right. confidence is, you know, I believe something is greater than today in front of me. And mm-hmm. I'm going to continue to develop myself and I'm going to have the confidence to believe and trust that I have a source Jesus Christ, and it's going to be side by side with me, walking with me, because he did say, as we've mentioned before, that greater things shall ye do if I go unto yeah, the Father. Yes. So I, that blows my mind. Right. How, how can we top that act? I mean, he was, yeah, he rose from the dead. He rose Lazarus from the dead. Yeah. So we're supposed to be doing greater works than yeah. him. But you wonder what those works are. See, I mean, he raised Lazarus from the dead. But, you know, a work of helping people that might open up somebody's life, some Somebody down the line might be a great this or that, but they need the confidence that we could put in ourselves to be able to develop ourselves to help them. Yeah. You know, and so how great is our work? You know, it, does, it doesn't look great in our eyes, but in God's eyes, it is fantastic because right. this is exactly what He's designed you for. But right. you need the confidence to be developed in it, and that, and that's where we live in a society that casts a lot of doubt. In a lot of wonder and a lot of worry, all yeah. this stuff. We have to get beyond all that. We got, yes, the worry, especially in the doubt, because a lot of people will try to talk you down and they'll yeah. try to place doubt into your mind and they'll try, you'll start to believe what other people say you are. Yeah. You'll start to believe what society says you are. Yeah. And, you know, what you need to believe is what, who he says you are, right? When, when you find confidence in him, who who he says that you are, then you know exactly what you want. Yeah. And it's not like a cynicism. Like, you know exactly what you want. You're still humble about it, but you you know exactly what you you want and what your goal is because you got to have a goal. There has to be an end goal. Otherwise, we're just all sitting here waking up, going to sleep. We don't really have, we're not really driven. We don't really have any purpose. We're just letting our phone suck our minds dry. Yeah. And then we wake up and do it all over again. Right. Like you're saying, there has to be there has to be a process where you're putting into action, you're getting better each day. Yeah. And you know, that's what we're doing here. The better you enterprises. We're helping you get better each day. You want every day you just want to be making some kind of progress. Yeah. But keep the focus. I like to keep the focus on God because that's the most important thing in my life. Yeah. It's definitely because I'm not, I can't handle everything by myself. I don't have the confidence to handle everything by myself. I tried it before. I tried it for 30 years prior and it it didn't work out very well for me. And it wasn't until I was missing a a piece, a a giant puzzle piece that was missing right in the center. Yeah. 
I mean, I was looking at this thing every day thinking this thing is complete, but there's, there's a giant missing piece. Oh, yeah. And once you have that, I think you can really start to understand that the trust is there because you put yourself, you put your trust into people. Mm-hmm. You know, I hate to say it, but people are going to let you down. Yeah. Yeah. And it could be anybody, no matter who it is. Yeah. People are going to let you down, but you cannot let that interfere with your confidence. No. You can't let it interfere with your ability to love and keep trying in general, but you can't allow that to interfere with your confidence because once you place your trust in God, you understand what God is. You see what he does. You see that he forgives. Yeah. You see that he restores. Yeah. You see that unlike your other relationships and people in your life, he remains faithful and he loves, he loves in a way that no one was able to do before for That's you. Right. That's right. Um, and what he, and he also renews people, you yeah. know, he completely yeah. renews people. And when he does that in your life, and when you see yourself become a brand new version of yeah. yourself, yeah. and you know, when you die to your old ways or, but when you, when you really start to see yourself become better mm-hmm. because of what he's doing in your life. Yeah. That develops a confidence that nobody can take away from you. That's right. That because is. it wasn't given to you by anybody else. No. So the no. only the only one the only one that can take it away is the only is the one that gave it to you. Yeah. And he's not gonna take it away. No, that's for sure. Yeah, he's got something good going on here. And and I know myself, because the Bible talks about strongholds. I remember I used to wrestle once in a while, and uh, if the guy could get me in a certain position or like, whatever. Phys- physically, you wrestled? Uh, oh, yeah, physically okay. a little bit. You know, not not great or anything, but, you know, you get yourself in a certain position. You just can't do anything anymore. Yeah. You know, he's, he, you're saying, uncle, or I give up, or whatever it is. Right, you, right. you win, you Bloody win. Bloody Mary. Yeah. You know, but the Bible <laughs> talks about strongholds in our life, and those are strongholds in the mind, and those are a lot of times the lies that are spoken to us. We take them as truth. And the doubt, all this stuff becomes a stronghold in our mind. We have mm-hmm. reasons why we can't do this, reasons why we can't do that. And that's where uh, Jesus came to knock down the strongholds and to be able to set us free, to set the captives free yeah. so that we can have confidence in ourselves and be able to realize that, yeah, you know, if God be for me, who can be against me? Who can work against the plan of God that he has for you? And that's yeah. where a lot of times we have to be careful of these strong holes, things that we've allowed in our mind to put us into an uncle situation where we can't do anything. We have to, we become too crippled to achieve. Our mm-hmm. mind is crippled with doubt and lack of confidence. Yes. And, and, we, and we want to do it with the goal in mind of helping other people. So I think, the, I think where we ultimately want to get to is we want to be confident, but then we want to be righteous people. We want to lead by example. And we want to inspire people to be righteous because you know, you talk about freedom and that's really yeah. what it is, setting the captives free, being free. Mm-hmm. There is no freedom in the current state of the world with the way everything is. When we just think in terms of like psychology, yeah. which is great. It's great to know what feelings you're experiencing, how to deal with certain things, understanding traumas and stuff like that. But inside of all of, in, inside of that system, Inside of your feelings, your thoughts, and what's happening in your mind, there really is no true freedom. And I think we're seeing that with the suicide rates, the amount of PTSD people have, the anxieties, depression. The only true freedom, I think, is in Jesus. The only true freedom is accepting God into your life. And and that freedom is going to give you confidence. Yeah, and that's where I know there's an element here I think we should talk a little bit about, Justin, and it's talking about an old nature. An old nature is a nature that will doubt and uh, and have a lot of issues. But once we come and invite Jesus to be a part of our life, there is a new nature. It's called like the hour I first believed, the first trusted. I've never heard of that. It puts God into operation. You know, and as soon as a person can receive a word and can receive an understanding and open up their lives to Jesus Christ, something starts to happen because we've actually given him an opportunity to work in us. And that changes everything. And that's where the Bible says that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, of doubt, or lack of confidence. God hasn't given none of this to us. He wants to give us all the confidence, you know, all the courage, everything that we need. And a lot of times in life, we are going to all other kinds of sources 
course is trying to find that one element where he has it. And the beauty of it, it isn't something that you have to save up a whole bunch of money for. It isn't something that you right. purchase. Because I remember I going to when I first came to the Lord, I went to the uh, store and I said, how much can, do I have to pay for salvation? I was joking with this Christian store. Yeah. And he said, you can't buy this stuff. And you really can't. Yeah. I, I bought a Bible from him, but I was joking with him. <laughs> but you know, you don't, this stuff is free. Yeah. It's all it takes is an element of belief, yeah. you know, and, and what happens is then you start developing that confidence. And that's where if you can find a source find some people that a church or something of that source that can minister to you and encourage you and help you develop that confidence in you. Someone that can speak positive to you. Materials, podcasts like this, but Mm -hmm. stuff like this that helps you to see yourself for who you really are and what God has created you for. This is gold. This Mm -hmm. is priceless stuff. And that's where I know myself, I've been around this for a year or two, and, you know, this is my life. It's yeah. my life. I, I mean, myself, it's easy to allow doubt, lack of confidence, all this stuff to slip in. And But, you know, you get wise. You get wise as time goes on. You start to realize where it's coming from, what you need to do to keep yourself encouraged. And, uh, you know, and you grow. You grow in Him. And a whole new nature. It mm-hmm. becomes a whole new nature way of looking at things. And it's beautiful. It really is. Because mm-hmm. you have yourself a real hope for the future. You realize, you know, everything that you're involved in right now is part of you, part of your process, part of your greatness, part of everything. So you put everything into trusting that he will take care of your every need. Yeah, I have plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope in a future. That is true. Yes, he does. That's well said. And I think just to wrap it up here, I would say I would highly recommend people to write down, kind of like I did, is write down what is it that you want? Well, what is it that you're after? Write it down because you can, when you're writing something down, we don't write many things down nowadays. So when you're writing in general, there's like a mind body connection there, maybe yeah. even a spiritual connection. Yeah. It's therapeutic, but just watching those words being written down because you can sit there and scroll through three, four hours of YouTube shorts in a day and you won't really retain any of the th- information that was in those videos. Yeah. Yeah. But if you write something down and you put it, somewhere where you can see it every day and you focus on that every day, yeah. eventually it's going to become a belief yeah. because you're seeing it every day. Just like everything else, when you see it multiple times over and over again, it's going to be a belief. And it, once it becomes a belief, like oh. we're saying, I think it all starts with belief and yeah. it, it takes over from there. And the beauty of that, it, it takes on a life of its own. Yes. You know, it start, you start to see elements of your life taking on a life of their own. And then you know someone else is in the midst of it. Well, I think that wraps it up for today. This was a good one, Justin. I think so too. Hey, we're glad you guys found your way here today. And we hope you can join us again next week for another good word. Until then, stay blessed by the best. See you guys.